Jen. This is Jen Rubin here from Payments.com. I'm here with Ed McLaughlin. Uh, please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about the projects you're currently working on here at MasterCard. Sure. Uh, Ed McLaughlin, and I'm uh, Chief Emerging Payments Officer which means I work on those growth areas for MasterCard, uh, really how we're standing up, what we think the next big lines of business are. So focus on things like emerging geographies. Mm -hmm. So how do we adapt our technology to take advantage of what's going on around the world? Things like financial inclusion, leapfrog environments where they may not have a strict fixed infrastructure, we're going more towards mobility, the ongoing transition of behavior we're seeing in e-commerce. So it's looking at geographies, technologies, devices, and really new ways for consumers to pay. So it's an exciting area. How do you hope to accomplish the goals you have for MasterCard within the next year? Well, there's a couple of things. Um, one of which is we're doing a lot through partnerships. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a big believer in open development. Some of the things we're doing with the APIs, working closely with our banks, working closely with other partners like mobile network operators through our um, mobile payment skate by initiative that we have. So it's really a synthesis of the capabilities we already have with what we can work with our partners and really packaging that to, to, to make changes in where we see the growth markets. You cover a lot of different areas, e-commerce, yes. mobile, P2P. Um, we'll ask you to do as Tim did and look into the crystal ball in three to five years. Which do you think will have made the biggest impact on the payments landscape? It's kind of funny. and I would honestly say I think all of it. And huh. What I mean by that is I think there's a mistake people made when they think the, 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 the consumer or the business is different based on the channel they're using. If you look at your own life, you consume services online. You take your phone and you go out into the world and you transfer money to people. So it gets back to that, that, that concept of synthesis I was talking about earlier, where we can take things like PayPass to enable different form factors like a phone so you can tap your phone. We have in control for alerts and controls over how that is. You could use that online for shopping use border links for cross-border, use marketplace to get an offer that you can either execute online or in the shop down the street. Mm -hmm. So I really think the, the, the key for us is saying how do these all these capabilities fit together? And then when you look across a, a very developed market where it's applications and experiences down to emerging markets where we're literally building the infrastructure to displace cash and allow e-commerce to happen. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't say it's a specific product that does it. It's how these come together to meet needs based on the individual user and the community they're in. Let's talk uh, mobile for a second. There are a lot of mobile payments yeah. companies out there. What makes MasterCard's approach unique? Well, I, I think there's a couple of things. And we have about 20 mobile products right now we're working on worldwide. And the reason they're working with the MasterCard is we can bring the payments and expert expertise to bear. So all of the rules of how do you have a widespread merchant network, how do you handle the settlement? Even the simple things like a chargeback, a dispute between parties. Those are things we've been doing for 40 years. We're very, very good at it. So we are, see ourselves fitting in extremely well with the mobile network operators, with our financial partners, as we see this transition to mobility. So similar to the role that a MasterCard had in the move to e-commerce, it becomes just another great channel for those things that are, that are pretty hard to do and that we're very, very good at. Where are mobile payments growing the fastest, and how far off are we seeing the uh, majority of the U of U.S. citizens being able to pay uh, through their phone at the, at the point of service? Well, the, the payments on mobile are happening in a lot of ways. You need to be careful with that. There, there's the elements of the phone being used as, a, as an online access device. So there's a blurring or a blending of what would be e-commerce and m-commerce around that. We're seeing phone-to-phone -phone payments, like you'll see with MasterCard Money Send or some of the things we're enabling through the payment gateway where it becomes the way for um, transactions to actually flow. Uh, we're seeing acceptance on mobile devices. So using the mobile itself as a terminal. So now people who never could be merchants before or in an environment where there's no landline infrastructure can now have access to the same global network that the premier merchants in, in, in the developed worlds do. And then you have the NFC uh, beginning of next year with Barclay Card and Orange. We'll be putting real NFC handsets near field communication, which allows you to, to tap the phone and leave your wallet at home and use that as your payment device. Those things are just coming to the market now. So I think what you're seeing more is a, is a, a broad-based shift as multiple technologies are really addressing the core thing that's happening, which is the mobile is becoming that primary part of people's everyday life, and they're looking to use it for more and more. 
a story I told earlier today, which which I just love. I was um, talking to someone who worked with a mobile network operator. And in their research, they felt people uh, were touching their mobile device about 60 times a day, which is just a profound behavioral change. So if you think about something that that's important to you, you're going to look to use it for more and more. You might even see it, again, we're in our, our second decade of e-commerce. So it started with people simply getting access to email. It's morphed into social networking. Um, you know, people are meeting, getting married, and living their lives online now. And, and you, I think you'll see that same sort of broad-based shift as mobility becomes a bigger part of people's lives and behavior. Um, speaking of a bigger part, Microsoft's API platform going to be a big part of your plans for the future. There's a lot of buzz about it, about developers being able to create applications that work with the Microsoft network. Um, sure. How's that going? And Well, there's a couple things on that. Um, with MasterCard Labs, the, which is our sort of innovation group that we've put together to allow us to, to experiment outside of the, the walls of the MasterCard network, one of the first things coming out of that is our open APIs. And that'll really allow us to, to unleash the, the creativity of the developer community to take advantage of services which we've, we've really reserved within MasterCard and allow those to be expanded out there. So I, I'm a big believer of that. Uh, I came up through the technology side, and uh, Bill Joy, who's one of the founders of Sun, was iconic. And one of the things he said is, no matter who you are or what you do, most of the smart people are always going to work for someone else. And, and I firmly believe that. So rather than trying to collect all the talent in your organization, how do we take what we're best at, the things that we're best in the world at, the capabilities of our network, and open them up so we can work with anyone to create all sorts of innovations and applications that are, that are precisely tailored for market environments that we might not even think of, think of addressing. So uh, we're very, very excited about the potential of, of continuing to extend and advance commerce through using APIs. Last question. Who or what has been the biggest influence on your career? Biggest influence on my career? Um, literally, there's so many. And I, I think for me, probably, uh, it's a gentleman by the name of John Connolly. He hired me out of college, um, worked with him through a couple of startups, and I just learned a lot about being a, being a leader, um, being a, I'll call it a real business person, making payroll, satisfying your customers, relentlessly working against the things that you had to do. And even today, I think of some of the sort of crucible moments we had together and some of the things that, that he taught me. Excellent. Thank you so much, Ed, for taking the time to speak with us. Thank you. Appreciate the time. Thank you.